Sunlux is actually the LA-based band that created the film score for this film. Um, and it's garnered really a lot of high praise since it premiered at South by Southwest. Chat, give it up for Ryan Lott, Rafiq Bhatia, and Ian Chang, who make up Sunlux. What is up, guys? What is up? How's it going? Good. Good to be here. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. It looks like you guys are like in a more chill space. I know earlier we kind of chatted and you guys are getting ready for tour, doing rehearsals, super busy. So we're excited that you just made the time for us. We appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we were kind of in a fluorescent hell when we did the tech, tech uh, check with you, but now we're in a... A better sunlight. Yeah, exactly. So. I'm here for it. I love it. You guys are glowing. Um, so let's let's chat a bit about this soundtrack. Um, it's pretty dope. 49 tracks deep. I want to start by asking you guys how you guys kind of got tapped into um, this particular project, because I feel like it truly lives up to its name. There's so much happening in this film. Um, it's very like fantastical. There's uh, a lot of stimulation that's happening and just talk to me about getting that call when you guys got that call and what was that like yeah it was pretty surreal to be honest um hey i'm ryan um yeah so daniel's hit us up this was a long time ago now it was before the pandemic it was 2019 um and at that point the daniels had uh, been developing the score for years even the, at that point the film not the score uh sorry <laughs> developing the script uh for years even at that point um and uh and uh but they hadn't shot a single thing it was still kind of early days and uh they had a script that would have made maybe a four-hour movie at the time um and they had uh before that for for a while though they had they said that they had been dreaming of us to score the film um and uh, Ian and Rafiq and I both, uh, or all three of us make our own, uh, music. We all have our own solo music, uh, in addition to the work we do as a band. Um, and I think that, uh, appealed to the Daniels a lot, at least that's how they described it to us is that they knew that they were going to need a world of sound and they didn't want just like your average, like Hollywood composer guy, but they also knew that, that maybe just like the average band that was not used to like pumping out tons of music, uh, was also kind of not going to cut it. And, um, yeah, and I think um, given the diversity of what we can create as a, as a band, but also as individuals, uh, I think they were really drawn to us. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was fun to get this script because it's so insane. Like the movie is so insane. So just imagine like like in script form, it like made even, it was like even harder to wrap our heads around, but it was also like hilarious and beautiful and like really everything. But I think Ryan, Ryan has told us that like the first time he was reading it he was like is there something wrong with this file like <laughs> like the, like if he'd turn the page and then you'd be like in a totally different universe and it's just like wait did, did i just skip a bunch of pages um and it, it really felt like when at least when i read it i was like i don't understand how this movie is gonna get made um it's so crazy but we did it and it took like everything that we had and i think it took everything that like every department had pretty much it like really drew everything out of everyone so yeah were you led in a particular direction though with this kind of film where like you said there's so much happening and it's kind of like a wild ride that you're on well it's daniel's like they have a really incredible background in music videos anyone who's seen the turn down for what video will <laughs> recognize just how how crazy they are but also like music is such a big part of their process that um there was actually a lot of specificity that came from them at every stage when we were working on this um but early on they kind of were like you know they they told us that they wanted music to help play the role of like establishing the identity of each universe so that like you know in the same way that like you know you hear two seconds of a song and you kind of know who the artist is like they wanted to use that to kind of market each universe and have it almost feel like somebody's like changing channels on a radio or something when you're moving through them um but over time they wanted all these like different seemingly unrelated things to come together and cohere into something that like was unified and had emotional weight you know yeah um and so that was the like very ambitious um instructions that they gave us that we uh we had to figure out a way to try to bring to life yeah you talk about going through the script and your mind kind of like being blown a little bit and then obviously each of you guys having your own individual styles and contributions where did you start where do you start 
<laughs> so the first task was one of the most absurd. Um, and it, um, it was, um, you know, so when they first explained this movie to us, they were like, you know, it's going to require all of these things. And you could tell that they were like, sort of like reticent to explain exactly how, how much they were going to like the kind of a broad, yeah. basically like this, the stuff that was going to be like, not that sexy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to like work to do. Um, I beg to differ. I well, no, no, but you could movie. tell that they knew exactly what they were doing, but I think they didn't want to scare us off yeah, sure. um, yeah. because it was like, yeah, we want what you guys do, but we also want like a lot more than that. And, um, and that was part of them having like more faith in us. I think mm-hmm. than we even uh, were brave enough to have in ourselves. And um uh, so the first task was actually to write a song that uh, that had to be sung on camera, which means it had to be, uh, you know, created in advance of shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had to write a song that was a love song that was kind of a, a ceremonial love song that in the style of like a uh, Broadway musical, like a Broadway musical yeah, like King and I or something. Yeah. Yeah. But you know. that could exist in multiple universes. Um, and uh, one of, one of which was a universe where uh, instead of fingers, people have hot dogs. Yes. Yep. Uh, so, um, <laughs> and like, that was, that was it. That wasn't, it wasn't like, yo, g- give us some like super gnarly beats and like really dystopic, awesome textures and stuff. It was like, no, like pull out the glockenspiel and make like a really sweet song about like slapping your hot dog fingers against your thighs as you fall in love. <laughs> and it was like, it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it was like, sure. <laughs> you know? So is it just kind of like a situation where you guys are all coming together and just like trying out a bunch of things, a lot of like experimental work? I know that you guys do that anyways um, in your own work, but how are you able to kind of bring that um, authenticity and that experimental um, vibe that you guys have anyways to this project? I think we, we felt like a lot of license to just be ourselves in general, although obviously there's a lot of these very specific tasks, such as the hot dog hand musical. Mm-hmm. There are a bunch of other ones like that. Um, but like in general for the score, like the fact that they came to us specifically um, and like, like I think Daniel Kwan, one of them like showed us his like year end Spotify list at one point. And it was like, look, like Sunlux is one of my top played artists. Like, like he, he likes our music. So we're like, okay, like we'll just like kind of do what we do, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that was that was really helpful, like kind of amidst all of the chaos and the madness, like we knew that we could trust in our gut and kind of like um, go with that in a lot of ways. I don't know, like, would, would you agree with that? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, I think that Daniels kind of saw in us a greater potential than we realized for ourselves. There was, there were, there was a good amount of stuff that I thought out of the gate we were gonna have to like you know, team up with someone to pull off, you know, um, especially since this movie leans pretty heavily into established genre yeah. in very specific ways and specific moments. Mm-hmm. Um, to Rafiq's point earlier, like we have to be able to sell like, okay, this is a, susp- you're like in the middle of like a suspenseful, like sci-fi uh, chase, you know, and it has to feel that way w- in under a second, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you have to get there. And a lot of that means, leaning into convention and, and um, into like tapping into the things that we all sort of like perceive na- by now um, through, through all of our experience, like watching, you know, uh, a century of filmmaking. Um, we have these sort of like associations that, that are built into how we perceive music. And we had to sort of tap into that. And originally I was thinking, oh, this is just going to be too much for us to try to pull off. And so we'll just like you know, find, you know, uh, people who can do that, who, whose wheelhouse this is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but the beautiful thing is what we really needed to do was to do it that, but the way that we would do it, you know, rather than really farm it out. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think Daniel's like, again, they, like, I feel like they, I could sense their like full faith in us (laughs) to make it happen. And, um, while we were resistant to it at first, I think eventually it was like a thing where it was like, yeah, no, we're going to do this. Like, this is, we're going to, we're going to do our version of this, you know? And and they, they just gave us full license and it was, 
so rad. It was so rad. <laughs> In a, in a way, like, you know, the protagonist in this movie or a lot of that, like, there's like a big part of it is like sort of like drawing upon like uh, other universe, like different versions of themselves from other universes and like even acquiring, it says in the trailer too, like, so I'm not really giving much away. It's like even yeah. acquiring, like tapping into their emotions and their skills to like uh, bring that into their current world to kind of like battle or do whatever they need to do. And it felt like, we had to do like a version of that to like make the score you know what i mean <laughs> yeah but it, felt, it felt kind of meta in that way yeah so i had read that you guys um kind of played around with like some gongs and some like chinese drums and i want to know a little bit more about the process of like turning those actual instruments into um like virtual instruments and just kind of building on that right yeah this this is a big part of our process for sure yeah. um building virtual instruments. So we we actually, it was like the day before all the borders shut down for COVID um, in 2020, we had a recording session at Stone's Throw in LA uh, where we rented a bunch of uh, Chinese gongs that are called a uh, paiku, that are basically like these tuned, not sorry, Chinese drums called paiku, tuned drums, Chinese drums, and like uh, a really big one also, and a bunch of different gongs that are tuned differently. And we just like went to town and had fun like sampling them um, and there's like a lot of different ways in which people sample instruments to turn into virtual instruments and we kind of like to experiment with like ways that are maybe a little bit um, not normal yeah um, doing like rolls and phrases and weird things yeah. that can be like flipped on their head um, but we got like a ton that day that like ended up being peppered throughout the, the movie um, essentially what it's doing is like we're you're recording small things small ideas and fragments of audio out of context out of any sort of um application that you have in mind it's more just like capturing sound uh on a raw level and capturing like little phrases of of, of musical uh, performance um and for those who maybe aren't familiar with sampling um but maybe have had as a kid had like a keyboard that had like little pads where you could like record yourself or like you know burping into the thing and like going oh, 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 oh. it's like it's essentially like a very sophisticated version of that is what we're doing which is where we're taking small like recordings and then through programming and mapping uh to uh like digital instruments we are um harnessing that audio in a way that we can uh create uh like we can flesh out musical ideas and and perform um on those instruments yeah because you're dealing with a, a film that taps into like the the multiverse, how do you capture the essence of that and like pinpoint this is like the sound of the multiverse? I mean, I think there's like a lot of like, um, just like aggregation going on, you know, and the approach is like a lot of like combining and building and like things spinning out of control and like the like noise of uncertainty in the universe, like, chopping everything up and like you know it, it's kind of like there's an aspect of it that's just like the universe being the sum of its parts and then there's another aspect of it that's the universe the, the sort of like feeling of conformity <laughs> or overload that we as people have when we try to c comprehend what the full multiverse is you know yep. and so I think there were like there were some certain moments where you know um some of the characters like get pushed really far and they're like spreading themselves really thin and you know in tr trying to like comprehend what that might be like as a person like it would really just be like a, a sense of overload you know and like um you'd you'd be like split into a million pieces before you could ever like really comprehend what it would be like so um you know there are moments where um it's just like the most chaotic and intense thing that we could bring ourselves to and then there are other moments where it's like less about what the multiverse sounds like and more about focusing on what's important within that multiverse which may be your relationship with your daughter or it may be like you know generational trauma or it may be some other you know like there's like all these aspects to the story that are kind of like you know it's like in light of the enormity of the universe or what the multiverse like 
is or sounds like or feels like like we still like all we really have is just like what's right in front of us on some level yeah um, I think so. a good point that you made, um, there are so many like mini stories happening within this greater story. Um, how did you guys ensure that the music that you were creating felt cohesive and felt like strung together in a way that made sense? I think a, a big thing that really helped was, um, and this is something we talked about with Daniels early on, was that like they wanted the score to have like melodic themes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not so much like, oh, when this character appears, like you hear like a little doo-doo-doo, -do -do, but like more like sort of emotional kind of like tenants that like you would hear repeatedly throughout the course of the film. And, and what can happen with that, which is nice, is like you can have like a melody and you, but you can dress it any way you want. And so there's like maybe like a certain melody. There's like one scene where it's like super dark and angsty, but another one where it's like really beautiful, but it's the same melody and like subliminally it kind of like helps kind of tie these things together and also and over the course of the movie I think like builds up a familiarity with the the viewer so that there's like something to hold on to mm -hmm. um and also something that can kind of communicate the emotions that are happening yeah it's like if you, if you think about a loom or something and like the universes are the vertical threads the melodies are kind of like the horizontal threads that like weave <laughs> into them to make <laughs> the rug you know nice um well, with there being um, 49 tracks, I imagine that you guys kind of probably created a lot more than that. Um, how did you guys go through and like cut things out? And it, it, how much did you create for this that maybe didn't make the movie? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I Nobody has asked us that. Oh, yet. I didn't even think about what we made that didn't make the movie. There was, uh, no, there was so much music. There was a lot. <laughs> yeah. So it's crazy. So, first of all, I mean, like, think about yeah. some of those early cues. We made like three or four versions of. Yeah. You know, and sure. they were like each four or five minutes long. Yeah. Like, the reason so why we're music. freaking out right now is because, um, for anyone who hasn't yet seen it, it's a two-hour and twenty-minute movie, and there's an hour and fifty minutes of our music in the movie. Crazy. So yeah, it's like five record, three to five records worth of music that's in the movie and all of that isn't even on the soundtrack and that's because in those 49 tracks there are also like additional collaborations we made that aren't in the movie so and then there's all the stuff that we made that didn't make the movie or the soundtrack yeah, so yeah it's, yeah it's many hours of material there's even like there's even a cue that uh, or a couple cues actually that daniels did themselves <laughs> oh, <laughs> which really? are kind of amazing um uh that that are in the film that are not in the soundtrack um those those guys i think <clears throat> we haven't said enough yet in this uh in this time together about how important daniels um were in the creation of the score and we like felt you know in a way that it, an actor is directed um we just felt direct very directed and just the insight that they had um, about m music and to, down to like very specific details, like philosophically, yes, um, you know, had obviously great ideas and great direction um, on, in a broad sense, but it was like really kind of amazing when they would have these like very specific ideas that I know wouldn't have come from my brain mm. um, that would would actually make me feel sort of skeptical whether or not they'd, they'd, they'd work. And then to watch them like work splendidly. <laughs> Um, was a really cool learning experience and in and in that sense um there were plenty of moments when you know the daniels themselves were sort of you know better film composers than we were you know uh, they couldn't necessarily execute it but um i just think that they they um and you hear this across the board if you're watching social media or whatever um everyone involved in this movie uh, every department um everybody's just saying y'all like daniels geniuses like yeah we couldn't have done this they brought out something in me that i never would have imagined you know like and i and i really think i really think that is um you can't you can't be you know stated more intensely yeah yeah, yeah that's so good what was it like for you guys creating music for a film versus for yourself for an album i know that you guys just um released one and well several actually um, as one big compilation. So what, were there any like unique challenges that came with uh, creating music and sound for a film, particularly one like this? 
I mean, there were a lot of challenges and and uh, like we like we were saying, there were certain things that were definitely outside of our comfort zone or like even our understanding of ourselves that like were possible. Um, another example is um, Ryan wrote a song um, that's sung by a chef and an anima animatronic raccoon in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, so the song, the prompt was basically to write a song in the style of Randy Newman, and they ended up getting Randy Newman to sing it, um, which is both daunting, especially since it's like that's not our wheelhouse, but um, yeah. that was that it's was not something I thought was going to be possible in this universe, <laughs> <laughs> but it happened. Um, so, yeah, they, they definitely we had to kind of like reach, reach for things that we, you know, because ultimately when you're making music just for an album, you know, maybe you have a concept for the album or whatever it is. It's like, it's, you're completely in control of it. And also it's just music on music's terms, you know, and mm -hmm. that's completely different than film score music, which like at the end of the day, the most important thing is that it serves the film. Don't let anything distract you from it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's something that like, as a band that typically just makes music for like albums, you know, um, and singles, like it's not something that uh, as a band, well, this, first of all, this is the first film we've ever scored together. Um, Ryan has more experience because he's he's scored a few uh, future films before. Um, and Rafika and I have done some like smaller things like scoring a picture, but um, this was definitely like a, a wild ride and a journey for us um, to kind of, yeah. And it's not only, not only are we like, scoring a film we're scoring this film you know and yeah. it, it feels like we're scoring three to five different films you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and having to make it feel like one across the multiverse i've seen thousands of evelyns let's take a listen to a few of these tracks let's start with um pinky fight so that the people can hear what we're referring to and we'll kind of um we'll stop and hear a little bit about how pinky fight was created and go on to the next one Walk us through how that one came together and what you guys <laughs> were thinking when you were putting it together and creating it. And yeah. Um, so this is sort of like, there's a part, there's a part of the movie. It's probably about like 15 minutes long where there's basically like, I think like five fight sequences, like in a row, like back to back. And it's just like fight sequence. Okay. Another fight sequence. Like <laughs> and it feels like you're just like, le like leveling up and leveling up. And at the end it's like, like the, the the biggest fight and this is like the ending of that fight sequence pinky fight um and i was you know with a score this massive we kind of like did some delegation so like each of us like handled certain scenes and this was this chunk of fight scenes was something that i like uh started on and was like under my kind of like i i was responsible for for getting it going and um a big basis for all these scenes was using actually some of the Chinese drums that we sampled. Um, so in the beginning of this cue, you hear like the dun, 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 and that's like those drums. Um, and so it started out uh, kind of actually in, a, in like the percussion was like sort of the first thing that came together for it, uh, which is a bit unusual, I feel like. Um, so we kind of like made the beat 
shaped it to, to the scene so that like there's all these like little like hits and things that happen like with like with the with the beat and um and then I think the next thing that we did was we added uh, Rafiq did some like uh, bass kind of playing it's like he's using a guitar but it, it sounds more like a bass um, and um, and then I think after that we did the orchestral stuff come after that or I think Andre Andre so uh, you'll hear like in this in this cue there's like some like pretty intense like flute playing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's um, although you might not hear it as a flute, it's like this. It's hard to tell. Nee, 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 nee. It's like it's kind of uh, yeah. It just sounds like life force basically. <laughs> <laughs> and that life force, the per the man behind that life force is uh, Andre Benjamin, uh, uh, better known as Andre Three Thousand, who um, we had the immense privilege of getting to do a recording session with um, for this film. And you know, I think for those of you who know, like he's been kind of like uh pouring himself into the art of playing flute um the past like seven years eight years or so um and you know there are these like youtube videos that surfaced of him like playing these double flutes and stuff and people were like oh my god like how interesting so we got really lucky um at some point we were sort of like asked to put together like a dream list of collaborators and um he was on there and our film agent was like, oh, that's funny. I was just having a conversation with him yesterday. And he was like, yeah, like, I'm really interested in um, playing flute on film scores. And we we're like, sign us, <laughs> sign right. like, like, send him the movie and see, the, yeah, see if so, he's interested. Yeah. yeah. So then, so then we sent him the movie and on the strength of the film, he was like, Let's all about it. it. Yeah. Wow. Was about it. Wow. He was, he was, yeah, super, super great. Super easy to work with. Yeah. Beautiful. Had uh, sort of, I mean, the energy that you'd expect, which was like a gracious, full of life kind of um full of like curiosity kind of approach um yeah and it was, he yeah. showed up to the studio with like 15 different flutes <laughs> that's uh, sick most of which are were like custom made for him by some guy in the desert who like makes these uh cedar flutes that are modeled after these clay mayan flutes wow so specific and that's what you're hearing on this particular cue is a double flute which means he can play two notes at once and control the notes of each flute mm -hmm. i mean yeah and um a channel or something yeah <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what you call it but he was absolutely incredible and like i just remember like in the session he would just be going like super hard for like hours and we'd be like bro like do you want to take a break and he's like no yeah. <laughs> like let's go like let's get I, this. I, kept, I kept bringing him water i'm like bro I, you need to hydrate. <laughs> exactly. No, like, Lubricate those pipes. Was that a very experimental session as well, for the most part, or was there a lot it, of direction? It was both. I mean, there mm -hmm. were, there was direction, but a lot of it was like about like let's get in like the same space and just like see what the potential of each one of these instruments is and like what we can kind of like create out of these ingredients, you know. And mm -hmm. um, I think like there was a lot of um you know like the each one of those flutes has so much color and character and like such a specific sound and they're actually all like because they're custom made and like you know each one has a different key and stuff they're all tuned differently and they're not necessarily like like if you played along with like a piano that was in tune that note from the flute wouldn't be necessarily in tune with like what the traditional like you know, Euro-American way of tuning is, you know, and, and so um, it actually like gave us ways to like, oh man, like this sound grates against the tuning in a way that like will push the feeling of the music outward, you know, like it's it sort of like really like tonally expanded the palette of what we created for this film and it it's like all over the score because of that. Um, and I just feel like you know, I think for all of us, like, we're all, we all have like really divergent and different tastes, but we all have a lot of things in common. And like, I think all three of us like recognize the same rhythmic feeling from like growing up and like first hearing AT Aliens or whatever, you know, like just like hearing Andre, like, you know, in verse and then like hearing him play the flute there's something in common about like his rhythm and his like sense of phrasing and stuff like that, that yeah. like, um, you know, it wasn't just like, 
we had to also like deal with that because you know in terms of like like we didn't just want to like capture all the like colors of sound and stuff too and so like especially worked into like woven into a lot of the fight sequence stuff mm -hmm. and in other places there are a lot of moments thankfully where you get to hear you know like <clears throat> where he would put the notes you know not just where we would put them so right right let's uh let's press play on your day will come and we'll chat about that So dope. I want to read some of the comments that are coming in because people are really enjoying this. Sad, stupid panda is saying um, this was awesome. Uh, Yo, Chris Cruz said this has to get a nod for best original score. Um, there are people saying this is insane. People saying they enjoyed listening to this in theaters. Ode to Somewhere oh, yeah. said was so incredible hearing this in theaters. So, I mean, you guys are getting a lot of love in the chat. Um, that was giving very gritty, dark, menacing vibes. How did that come together? We're like tearing up just hearing yeah. it again. Yeah, this is uh this is a very emotional part in the film. And um this was a this was a one of the only moments um of our music, of our existing music that was in the in the temp. The, the temp is like stands for temporary. And so when you're when you're making a film, usually what happens is the directors and a music editor come come together and they they basically put uh, temporary music across the film just to kind of like give an idea for like how it's going to feel when there's music and also as a sort of starting point a referential starting point for the composer and uh in this scene our song or uh the a version of this song the original version of this song your day will come from our album uh bones um was in the cut and it just felt 
so good. And you could tell that they had edited to this music. Um, and we should talk about that later as well. Like um, there's more examples of this, but this was one of the only moments where it was like, here's an existing piece of Sunlux music that feels really, really great. But we were like, we can, we can do it better. <laughs> so what we did is uh, we made this new version of it. And um, it's, uh, so it's kind of, it's kind of cool because it sort of harkens back to some of our earlier work, but then also like uh, leaps forward into um, the future and into like the now of this, of this, uh, of this crazy multiverse score. Um, a lot of the dystopic kind of like moments or feelings that you having listening to it you were calling it, i think you called it like you might have used that word or something or aggressive or all sort of crackly and broken up yeah. is uh is it's actually in contrast with the with the core musical material which is actually quite sweet and quite sad and melancholy and and even soaring and um that's something that we're really going for a lot in the score was is like finding that contrast. And it's something that we do a lot as a band at Sunlux in our records. And one of the reasons why the Daniels reached out to us and, um, is trying to find that weird balance between something that feels like it's about to explode or is in mid explosion, but also is hovering peacefully in this like um, angelic state. <laughs> and um, I think that's kind of what we were going for with this, this cue, um, yeah. Yeah. So Higgy Duets in the chat said, I can hear the heartbeat of the multiverse through these sounds. That's that's pretty yeah. incredible. I love that you kind of talked about that balance, though, because it makes me think of um, This Is Life uh, featuring Mitski and David Burns. I felt like that was just like a very sweet serenade. It felt very different from what we had just listened to. Maybe we can listen to a snippet of that. Um, but yeah, just uh, talk, hearing you talk about that balance, I think you guys did a really excellent job at executing that. Um, should we take a quick listen to that snippet? Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you just real quick. Yeah. Um, your insight is good about this, uh, song feeling quite, um, serene and like, and, and actually set apart from that feeling of like everything is bursting as it, as it seems. Um, and that was an insight that, um, yeah. that David Byrne had, um, when we hit him up about collaborating on this song with us is that, you know, he's like, I watched this movie and all this, there's so much to see and so much to think about. And it's, it's like basically one long explosion into like, you know, a million colors. Um, I kind of like w feel like what it needs to be as a song that actually feels quite peaceful and serene. Um, because it's the end credit song. Because it's the end yeah. credit song. Yeah, that's, that's a good. Yeah, there's some piece. relief there almost. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and it's just like, after all of this, like, very maximal experience that you just sat through as an audience member for you know close to two and a half hours it's like a reminder at the end of the day that like this is like really like like it's like a beautiful movie at its core you know yeah. and that's like what we wanted to like leave as like the final impression you know thanks to david um, yeah and mitski uh mitski uh collaborated on it as well she sings in duet with david byrne uh, it's a song that David and I wrote together, and and then we asked Mitski to sing my part. Um, and I think her oh, voice God, and her so delivery good. is like <laughs> oh, exactly yeah. the kind of like balm that you want to hear after, after as the dust is settling. Yes. The roll. So, yes, let's take a listen.
from destiny Not only what we sow Not only what we show This is a life Every possibility From destiny I choose you and you choose me Not only what we sow So, so lovely. Honestly, I'm curious, like when you guys finally sat down and watched the film with your music, like woven through it, do you feel like it gave your music new life? Like what was your reaction, like sitting down and watching it um, and just seeing it all come together? Oh God, it was <laughs> such a cathartic experience. I cried. I mean, I have to say that like in the court, over the course of scoring this film, I cried many times because there's like, just scenes that I relate to deeply per in a personal way um, mm -hmm. as like a, an immigrant myself and just like, yeah, so it was crazy to just see the music. Like it was at South by Southwest and it was the premiere. So there's a lot of excitement and just being in a room full of people after being like alone working on this because we all live in different cities. So mm -hmm. um, we worked on this throughout the pandemic, basically over Zoom and like text and Dropbox links and wow. all that. So, being like in a room full of people, laughing, applauding, crying together. It was amazing, yeah. It was, and actually we've seen it several, like a couple times since then and every time it's 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 like that. It's kind of- yeah. I've crazy. cried more every single time. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's really like, you know, I think one thing that I noticed in that first time watching it back too is like, with the exception of certain things like the hot dog hands musical like a lot of times our directive and you know like this was something that we were, were really upfront about when we first got involved with the film because we were like you guys know our music like you came to us specifically so you know that we're not that funny you know what I mean like we're not like this is like we're go we're, go we're goofy, goofy people but like the but music musically yeah, doesn't yeah. really have a lot of humor in it yeah and they were like yeah that's the point like you guys' job is going to be to like really you know like pretend that like the most ridiculous things that are happening on screen are actually really serious you know and like score them as though they like you you have to suspend your own disbelief so that the audience does to some extent too which will make it even funnier mm -hmm. um and so watching it back in the theater like there were a bunch of parts where we had to do that while we were working on it to an extent that we almost forgot that those parts were funny or yeah. like <laughs> how funny they were and then seeing it back like and realizing that like what the like sweet like you know sincere like beautiful sounds we had made were like accompanying on screen you know like it was it was great i mean another um, way to think about it or to say it is that like, you know, for the first time we had the ability to see the movie through other people's eyes. Yeah, not analytical, um, like not like, yeah. Cause yeah. we were working on it up until like the very last moment. So like wow. we never really, until the premiere, we never really watched it down without like thinking about the balance between the dialogue and the music or like anything like that. And so it was, uh, yeah. Yeah, and in that sense like we didn't actually see the movie <laughs> until then because yeah. that's not what we saw and what we worked on for years. Right. Isn't the movie. The movie now is what's in theaters, you know? Right. What's now coming to theaters, you know? So it's like that's the movie. And so on um, that at South by that premiere, that first premiere, we we saw it for the first time in a very real way. Yeah, and then to get that applause and that standing ovation, like what a feeling! Yeah, the sat <laughs> the thing that was kind of amazing was like, there's so many times in this in this at that at that screening where it was like, people were just like yelling and 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 laughing, <laughs> like straight over all of the score that we had done because <laughs> it's just like there's so many things where you just like you just 
what yeah right. no, and and, it's like, but like i was like not mad at all i was like this is a sweeter sound in my ears than the score <laughs> yeah, it's like how many times do you watch a movie with 1200 people and like exactly. it's like being at a concert you know it's like playing a show or something and feeling like these like waves of energy go through the crowd like yeah it was a, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Let's coast in the chat said, I wonder why they chose, chose Mitski. Mm -hmm. So actually, you know how earlier I mentioned that uh, Daniel Kwan shared his top, uh, like his most yeah. listened to end of year kind of list and, and uh, Sunlux and Mitski were the top two. Ah. I believe. And so, I mean, I'm a big fan of Mitski. I think she's an incredible sure. artist, a force of nature, like as a performer and just like, like, yeah, just, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. So like, you know, when I saw that, it just like planted it in our brains. And as we were thinking of collaborators, we were like, well, like she's gotta be on there. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Let's take a listen to um, It All Just Goes Away. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Someone in the chat said, uh, Strict Genius says, look in the bagel. <laughs> How did this one uh, come together? I love that um, you kind of touched on this earlier, but just like how this particular soundtrack uh, forced you guys to stretch yourself in new ways. Um, can you kind of talk about this track and how maybe that did that? It's coming back. Oh, looking, yeah, they are. Um, it wants to be heard. Um, this was a, a unique one, and it, it represents something we did on the score that I think is like we're particularly proud of. Is which we we drew a through line between our last uh, record, uh, which was Tomorrow's Three, which is the third of a triple album called Tomorrow's, and uh, in Tomorrow's Three, it opens with a song called Unbind, mm -hmm. and it ha it contains material that is closely related to this uh, this theme that you're hearing he here um, in this with the big strings, um, and so like the super fans will be like whoa like they'll hear it and they kind of draw that correlation. It's something we've done historically as a band is kind of make connections across our releases uh, with musical DNA that is shared. Um, and in this one, we had that material. And again, if you remember, we did most of this during the pandemic. So a lot of the um, material that we had to work with was material that we had fortunately just recorded and we're sitting on a big trove of audio that we could then build instruments and sounds from to make this score. And those, those strings were some of the things that we had had um, recorded. And so um, before uh, we saw I think it was before we saw any of this movie, but we just had the script. I, yeah, this was a theme that we, yeah. Yeah, but also the part that this this wind up, remember it was like the, this totally different sketch mm -hmm. and then this theme. And I just was like, what if they go together? Yeah, That was yeah, this yeah, one. Yeah. So I, I had come up with this like sketch um, that was maybe gonna 
that just felt like a fight sequence of like some sort of epic battle. And so like for the longest time, this piece of music was called Epic Battle Mode. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's how we remember it when we talk about it. It's not the title of the thing or even the, the cue number from the cue sheet. It's like Epic Battle Mode. Um, and there was this was one of those examples that happens sometimes when you're making any kind of art where there's like some kind of crazy lucky accident that happens and it's just like destiny like going this shall be you know and it was like and it was this is it was like two pieces of music it was the strings um from the record and it was like this sketch that i'd done off of yeah. totally off a of picture made out of like balafone yeah. samples yeah it's like this like the like brown that yeah. sound is a yeah detuned balafone which is like a which is like a, a mallet instrument with like resonating gourds and stuff um strange and then um just superimposing mm -hmm. these strings um and then uh it just kind of like came to life and was like I want to exist, you know. <laughs> it was actually very consequential because that the way that you made those strings work with the balafone sketch that you had, that ended up being like so that melody, the melody in this song is is one of the themes that I was talking like one of the main ones from the movie that I was talking about earlier that like are is exists over the course of the movie in many different ways, many different iterations. Sometimes it's like actually sweet if it's like possible to imagine that like based off of just listening to this um but it's yeah it's I, i'm very glad that you did that because it it like really changed a lot about the way the score ended up being yeah I love that you mentioned Tomorrow's Three because it's a perfect segue into, um, and you kind of answered this. I was going to ask if there was um, any instance in which um, you felt like the two were kind of seeping into each other because were you guys working on, on them kind of simultaneously? Yeah, so like when we were saying we got, we, we like had our kind of start with the film in fall 2019. That was like while we were pulled up in the studio for a couple weeks doing like a residency where we were just like, getting material together for those tomorrow's records and so while we were working on them we kept thinking about like and flagging things that could be cool for the film like things where it felt like concepts we were exploring in the music um might be relevant to things that were in the script you know um and like one of the main things that's happening on tomorrow's is that there are all these moments where like the listener sits with like elements as they go into and out of alignment you know and it's like the sustained kind of feeling of like tension and resolution and like being patient with that you know um and so there were all these elements that we were creating like cellos that were diving you know like swooping in and out of tuning with each other or like drums that were like starting out lined up and then like fanning out so that they would all be like split up and then come back into focus and alignment um you know so as we were coming up with some of these concepts, we were like, okay, like this feels resonant with the storyline. Let's like save this or like, let's just take just this aspect of this and send it to Daniels and then they can like be thinking about it while they're working on, um, you know, getting like the shoot together. And so even though like this is, you know, maybe one of the most prominent examples where like the, to cross pollinate, there's like a lot of other elements if you listen closely that are like well, come, come recover, come too. recover, yeah, yeah that's, that's a big one. Yeah, there's also, a there's yeah. a song called "Come Recover" on uh, Tomorrow's Three that is uh, the foundation of a ten minute sequence um, in the film, and uh, yeah. actually a bit of it is heard at the end of what you just played. Uh, Your day will come because it's uh, there's so much like cross pollination. I mean, within the score and across uh, universes. <laughs>